Hello, good afternoon everyone and welcome back to the Summit 6C qualifiers. Uh, here we are, we have a pretty interesting matchup today. We'll meet, this will be the last best of three series for the day. So we have here a Filipino standoff be between Execration versus Mineski. Alright, you guys don't need any introduction to some of these players. You guys know Abed, the best meeple in the region. You know DJ, formerly from Fnatic. Gabby and Rappi, you know, a couple of new additions to the team. Where I believe they came from Rave. And you have Mineski, oh, you guys probably have heard the name Raging Potato from the Filipino casters back before TI6. Ninja Boogie, a former Rave member as well. RR, who actually came from Execration. He played the offlane for them. And you have Jules, and of course, the best Naga in the world, right? We have Miracle, all the way from, I mean, for, you know, he, he's back in Singapore, I believe. And of course, introductions from myself, I'm Hades, your caster all the way from Singapore. And here we are, bit ourselves into the draft. Immediately, first ban Meeple. Sometimes it feels like execration, you just can't give them the risk of picking up the Meeple. Because if you've watched any of these highlights from the past, maybe like MPGL, even during the TI6 wildcard, you know that against execration, you have to ban Meeple. You can't give it away. And as much as it's a caster's dream to cast a bet's Meepo games, we will not be seeing it today. Mineski, well, they face a bit of a respect ban from Execration themselves. Naga, second ban. And there's been a bit of a rotation going on between Raging Potato and Miracle, where they will alternate the lanes. Sometimes you see Miracle playing in the carry role, sometimes he plays mid. Of course, that's only with heroes like he's really confident on. But recently, we have seen where Mineski you do have him playing mid more often where you see him on heroes like alchemist naga od so execration open up with the oracle and this is something where we see a bit of debate between some teams where you start to see a bit of a trend as well where oracle and dazzle there's a bit of a you know who is slightly better but at the same time maybe if you notice from for example the chinese region where dazzle oracle it doesn't make a difference and actually i didn't know that the axe culling blade goes through false promise if as long as you're below the, the threshold of HP which is required. So enemy Mineski starting out pretty strong in the team fights already I would say you have faceless void and keeper of the light. So taking the Azalor, it's it's just one of those really toxic heroes which you don't want to play against. You know, mana leak, but ever since the nerf where they, they doubled the mana cost from 75 to 150. I would say you it has really affected the hero. Like if you've played it recently in your pubs, you well know that the keep of the light mana leak nerf is very significant. But execration, a bit of a deny pick, but also a very good pick for themselves. It's the OD. And this hero against Void can give you mana issues. Because Void has I would say his mana pool is average. So if you get a couple of hits in from the OD, steal some intelligence, it's really, really good. But at the same time, execration have quite a number of ways to I would say prolong a bit of the fights. You, you see False Promise, you've got the Sustain and of course a bit of a nuke coming up from the Purifying Flames from the Oracle. But for your Outworld de Devourer, now that's a bit of a different case. This hero can scale either really well or things get a bit scary for him. But um, otherwise, you know, this hero is pretty good. We'll see how they decide to get whether it will scale pretty well late. But Mineski, you know, Boogie is a bit afraid, doesn't want to see that super toxic combo. OD and Omni Knight, that's just one thing. Yeah, it's it's actually really, really interesting to see how this... Or the, I'm not sure what you call it, the slacks phenomenon. Because you see Omni Knight really appearing in the competitive scene. Like, for patches, maybe even for a couple of years now. It's, our, it's debatable that Omni Knight has always been a very niche pick. He comes in very very situational circumstances but now you see him rising into the scene like teams are even playing him in the offlane some like to play him in the support role hell you even see like wings gaming for example your ti6 champs they played an oracle omni knight anti-match combo that was really interesting stuff which i casted and i didn't think that you could see omni knight and oracle being used so aggressively like your anti-match would just blink forward Purification and Purifying Flames, double purification, come on. Bam. Instant nuke down. And there's no way you run away from it. But back to this game. Execration have been struggling a bit. Like recent in recent performances, by the way, just a bit of info for you guys, this is the lowest bracket. And the good thing about this game actually is you you see that in the Summit 6 they have been following this single elimination. Okay, no, I rather yeah. 
from the British bracket, maybe a bit, but I would say I, I'm going to miss the double elim elimination for maybe for you guys who are following the Boston Major, you know it's single limb. And the team who loses this is going home, will not be able to continue their journey into moving forward and, you know, continuing their chances of making it to the main event at the Summit House. But, alright. Here we are. Alchemist banned from execution again. It's just denying Miracle. Where Juggernaut as well. So, okay, you, you are pretty much banning out three of Miracle's heroes. And Mineski or other, they're, yeah, they're one of the teams who like to play the Juggernaut mid as well. They're very flexible of that. Nyx Assassin. This could mean that you would see the Faceless Void into the safe lane with the Nyx going to the off lane. But Execution going up with a very nice pick of their own. OD, you know if you get the Astral out, Kunkka can easily fall with a Torn into the ship. It's great setup. Alright, so... Mineski, Mineski, how would you want to respond to this? Shadow Demon's been banned on their side, so that's just one of the really, really annoying things. Alright. Yep, so how are you guys doing? Thank you all for tuning in. Of course, yeah, great shout out to Lysander who just finished his national service. And for the Thai viewers out there, very sorry to hear about your loss. I think the King of Thailand just passed away recently. Yeah, so, you know, there's things around the world. But alright, back to this game between Mineski and Execration. For me, like, okay, I'll do my best not to sound biased, but I am supporting M Mineski in this. Recent performances show it, and it's not just because Miracle is Singaporean, guys. So, yeah. But it, it's always fun to cast Filipino Dota because these guys, uh, they, they started a few couple of trends, and sometimes the Dota, or the most of the times, the Dota which they played, at least the competitive one, can be really, really strong. It's really aggressive, it's really fun to watch. And for the side of Execration, I think some of the nagging things for them, like, it's really about some, I think, Rappi and Gabby are still kind of inexperienced, not sure what they want to do. Sometimes it looks like they're not really on the same page. Like, it was quite surprising. So far in the Summit 6, like, we've seen Faceless, this very, very new team from Singapore with Black and Jabs, hints of German and, you know, Thailand just rising to this really really godlike status and, and alright Execration will get the Huskar pick Mineski is gonna have the work cut out but Blinding Light is really good against Huskar Venge as well Venge just one of those very very reliable supports going up against you know going against all these very very annoying heroes it's great for safety against the OD like an Astro into a Torrent or a ship Venge is gonna be there for the swap now we just wanna see what Mineski will actually pick up like they take out the Dark Sea on their side, so that's just one annoying hero. You don't want to surge on the Huskar into the vacuum. Tinker would be the final ban from Execration, but if anything, that would be a Raging Potato hero. Could be a Faceless Void and Miracle, as we see RR taking the Nyx Assassin to the off lane. And. Alright, Execration, Execration. That off lane, like Tidehunter is still in the pool. They might decide to do something a bit kinky, like a, like a clockwork. Other offlaners available for you. Nature's Prophet, we haven't seen him for a while. Probably because he's really, really greedy. As a, as a core in general. But the Tinker ban from Mineski is unique. I mean, Miracle doesn't play Tinker. So this is where, once again, you know, Mineski will be... Well, I wouldn't say they'll be forced, but they will have to alternate the lanes a bit and who goes mid. Ursas can still come inside. They could play an Ursa mid. That's pretty good against Huskar. And if you're Execration as an offlaner... Let's see, who else? Slaughter is available as well. Amplified damage Huskar means you get really strong Roche control. Especially since you are on the dire side. Like Mineski, if you noticed, they actually chose to have the two picks. Like they wanted to be second pick. Just a team preference kind of thing. Learning new things every day. Alright, so if you're execution, who do you want to synergize with this? Fortunes and into a torrent, it's quite annoying. 
but it's pretty good. Actually, one more thing which I noticed, you could always try for Conquer Offing. Like, I've... Okay, recently, something which I noticed from eHome, like, what they would do is get a Wiki and an Oracle. That was some really, really annoying stuff. It was such a bad combo. It's a really fun combo, actually. You can even try in your pubs. Fortune's end onto the Wiki, and the Wiki will run to the enemy hero. So even if they had a sentry there, you want to run away from that. You're not going to go try to take that out. So yeah, like I said, Execration, they will pick up the Slaughter, which means Mineski could pick up... Mm, yeah, like I said, Ursa is still available. But it, Ursa with Faceless Void synergy is not that good. Unless they decide to put the Void into the offlane with Nyx mid. And that's and where... You could try for a Sniper. Like, okay, don't don't get me wrong, guys. Like, Five Sniper is a really eight. situational pick. But against OD, he's an amazing laner. And in, in the Chinese scene, he has the counter. So they will go for the PA. Looking for that blur. The synergy between PA and Faceless Void is very, very tricky. So, PA mid... Looks like a PA mid. Oh wait, no, it's going to be a Nyx mid, actually. Yeah, it's going to be a Nyx assassin mid. With the PA, safe lane, and you have Faceless Void going to the off lane. Alright, so that core Nyx assassin. I mean, who doesn't love looking at an Agonyms on a Nyx assassin? That's just one of those really, really cancer picks. You know, just... You no know, walking around and he's just in the ground. Bam. Tro throwing all these stuns and not to mention the reduced cooldowns. Ten seconds remaining. That's some fun stuff to watch. But alright, ex it's gonna be an remaining. execration DJ Kunka. The ship will be pretty good against oh this it I like this synergy with the Huskar and the False Promise because of the fifty percent damage reduction. So just one of these things, these tiny details which do add up. Gain movement speed as well. Think of that combined with the sprint. Slaughter is actually going to be de deceptively tankier. Bit of a pause. Alright, so guys, here we are. Game 1 of this best of 3. And the Filipino giant standoff between Mineski versus Execration of the Southeast Asia TI6. Is it not TI6? The Summit qualifiers. Oh my god. Alright guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I'm going to enjoy this. And firstly on the Radiant side to introduce Mineski. Raging Potato on your Nyx Assassin. Jules playing on your Vengeful Spirit. You're going to have Ninja Boogie playing on your Keeper of the Light. RR playing in your Faceless Void. Last but not least, you're going to have Miracle playing on the Phantom Assassin. On the dire side for Execration, Abed's going to play in the OD. You see Chemo playing on the Oracle. With a mid Gabby Huskar. DJ playing your Kunkka. And you're going to have Rappi playing on your Slada. Bit of a smoke earlier on. As you look at Execration, they're kind of edging around the bottom rune, I feel. Getting very nice wards down already. Going to get an Observer and a Sentry. So either way, one of these wards going to block out this camp. It's going to be very, very annoying. They have to destroy the OD top a bit. It's still not sure whether or how the lanes will look like, but pretty much what I suppose they'll be is Raging Potato. Potato, Potato. Alright, so it looks like it should be a rune apiece. The battle begins. There we go. So yeah, it's going to be a Nyx Assassin mid. Like, I like this. When you max out the mana burn against OD, it does a ton of damage. Especially since, you know, OD is always going to get his mana pool pretty much never zero. Unless he has super bad RNG. So that's why you put the Huskar mid. Gabby should be having an okay time. Especially going up against a melee hero like the Nyx Assassin. You can see that's why Ninja Boogie is here. But keep off the light with that 52 base damage isn't really going to do much against Gabby. Although Huskar does have low base damage of his, you know, for his own. So they do run an aggro lane with Miracle and Jules. They do get the Observer taken out. But Kima going for the Fortune Zen into Jules. DJ is going to be here to throw a couple of hits with the sword. A bad also coming in. Jules, this could be First Blood going that way. Yep, this should be First Blood. Jules, Jules, Jules. Not like this. First Blood going the way of DJ. And Miracle is going to feel very, very unsafe in this lane. Getting his PMS. So that's going to make him a bit tankier. 
And now, of course, we see Ninja Boogie now coming to the top lane. So we're going to see a 3v3 situation. I really wish I could be in, like, the TeamSpeak or Discord, whatever. That'd be really fun to hear. And, alright, so you see this tri lane very heavily contested between the two teams. But, of course, OD's going to have a decently okay time. Miracle going up into this as a PA. You don't usually see PA in these aggro tri lane situations. You usually want to see, like, a Luna or maybe even a Sven. Just basically a, a core who can give you that... You know, give the rest of the team, give the support a bit of a boost. But anyways, yeah, Raging Potato being brought really, really low. He'll be forced to salve up. The flame's not going to take him down, actually. It just expired. So, he's going to be 5-2 against the Huskers 3-0. For now, he has an advantage. RR getting his lane pushed in against the Slaughter. He's 9 in theory. And regarding who's going to come online quicker, I think Rappi has a much easier time. But anyways, Raging Potato going to get the stun onto Gabby. Going to try and right-click him down. Gabby has to be careful. A couple of hits. He could actually die here. The south is going to come out, so he's okay. And you look at top lane, Execration. Everyone not exactly in the healthy region. Maybe for DJ because he has the tango and the south. Abed still with five tangos. You can see he's gone for the stick so that he can get just that extra bit of sustain in a way against the PA daggers who wants to farm. He can't really get too close. Otherwise, he's going to take harassment damage. But hold on, hold on. Jules coming to the middle lane. Could be looking for a very, very sneaky, sneaky gank on Execration. Mr. Gabby, what do your spider senses tell you? But of course there's an observer ward there. So he spots it out. He's hugging the tower, even going with the creep block. Doesn't want to get too close. Miracle going ham here. Top lane, they could try to turn here into Miracle who will just blink away. So Tori not going to land. Jules, of course, he's going to take key and his invisible ass back to the top lane. And now even a bit being forced to salve up. I think that came from DJ. Yeah, this lane really full of action here, but no one's really dying as there was only first blood who did go earlier on to DJ on Jules. This is one of the good things because you don't usually see a bottle onto a Huskar. And that's where Raging Potato should have a bit of an edge where you can spam spells. Spike Carapace is going to be very, very annoying. Yep, he will not actually be getting that many points into the mana burn. But he's taking a lot of harassment here from Gabby. He's trying to burn the bug down. Squish it. Torrent's going to fly out. Will they get a bit of nuke damage out here onto Miracle? Very unlikely. As you look at Abed, he's still level 2. They're depriving him of the EXP. You look at Miracle already hitting that level 4 pretty soon. And that's because the supports have rotated out the lanes a bit. So that allows for him to get you know, more EXP. Where Execration, they're playing this very, very passive positioning. And just look at them. DJ's all the way here. They just want to cover a bed, make sure he gets somewhat decent farm. So everything in this game is going to boil down to your, your Void and your Slaughter to see who will dictate the pace of the game. Or oh, of course, un unless your Nyx Assassin gets level 6. But for now, he is underleveled compared to Gabby. Pop the Carapace. You want to do it. You have an Arcane Rune. But top lane, they want to go here into Miracle. The Fortune Send, the Purifying Flames will not be enough. And he will back off. Illuminate's going to blast out. And everyone's really low. But Execration, for the first time, actually, they do push them back. Miracle should be popping those Stick Charges and the Tangle. So he will be okay. They do say DJ looking for the Torrent Miracle, doesn't get caught, dodges it just barely. And Potato's gonna get himself a nice rune bottom lane. He loves the runes. Bottom tower is and of course attack. Chemo's gonna keep healing up a bed. Very, very annoying. Level 2 Purifying Flames, the nuke is very significant with such a short cooldown as well. Radiance so, look at the next Assassin. Hitting at level 6, but Huskar could jump him if he wants to. Gets him under the tower, doesn't really go for the Vendetta. But anyways, Kunkka will suicide to a creep. Miracle of the Blightstone. So, if anything, this should be that Desolator and Vladimir's offering build, which we usually see. And actually, oh, Nyx Assassin! Gets the kill onto Gabby, who didn't really dive him. Just got caught by the stun, the carapace. This is one of the bad things about trying to harass a Nyx. The top lane, they're trying to go here into a bed. Can he get him here? Miracle is going ahead, the Illuminate does connect, but he probably won't go as Jules is very low. Chemo could actually nuke him down, but doesn't have the mana for it. Alright, so one for one. Mineski and Execration, very, very even here. 
Enraging Potato, after getting that solo kill, he's gonna have the advantage into the game. With the Regen Rune, actually he has Vendetta up in 5 seconds. The ward gonna expire in a bit, but it's gonna spot out the rotation, so they do immediately ping it out. And roll it back, Oracle suiciding to another creep. So Potato, all the way. Could find a courier snipe, actually. Take the courier snipe, take the courier snipe! Oh no, he doesn't get it! Yeah, they do suspect it, so he, he will just back off. Nice game sense coming up from execution. And if chemo TPing in, maybe they do have a bit of a safety net, as the Huskar does get a bit of solo farm. So they put Observer Ward down, it's gonna scout them out. Potato, getting a bit closer. I think he's gonna go for the Carapace right there. Yep, it's gonna land into two heroes. The Illuminate flies out. They're thinking about going in, but they just don't have anything. His miracle is really low. The stun's gonna come on a Chemo. Chemo should be dying here. Actually, looking for the dagger. Not really. Chemo's still alive. And the torn's gonna fly. Yep, the X mark. They will kill the Raging Potato, but they lose the Oracle in that process. So that's gonna be a pretty even trade, but they do get the TP at least to the top lane from Rappi. And we haven't seen RR come out just yet. Level 7 has the Chronosphere waiting for that to come out. Jules is gonna get a bit of solo time in the middle lane. Gabby could jump in if he wanted to. But doesn't have a creep wave there, so he won't do it. I just like how these two teams they really understand what's going on. So they're gonna just rotate a bed to the bottom lane. Two to two. Very evenly contested. PA should be rotating as well. Vendetta coming out from Raging Potato. Let's see where this potato can he find the Huskar again. Miracle pretending like Raging Potatoes in there. Do they have a sentry? Yes, they do. They could travel. They put the sentry down, so Raging Potato is going to change his sights to the bottom lane. They might be able to find DJ. Yep, Vendetta is going to come out and the stun. DJ is dead. Raging Potato getting himself a kill. And an Invis Rune for that matter. So he's going to initiate much easier. But he doesn't know if the sentry and the observer mid just yet. Alright, so Rappi, 600 more gold, he's gonna get that lovely Blink Dagger. And remember I talked about how you wanna see which team will do these initiations first. But Void could be thinking about going for something here. Nah, he won't. He'll just time walk that damage away. So Miracle doesn't... He wants that level 6. With the level 6, maybe they'll try for some Coupe de Gras onto the Huskar. But looking to the next Assassin, you know, with the Invis Rune, he's gonna hit to the bottom lane a bit. Ninja Boogie just picking up some nice EXP at this top lane. Chakra and Illuminating Creeps. That's all he needs to do. And he's going to keep the lane pushed out. Rappi, 200 gold to that blink. But looking at Potato all in the bottom lane. I don't think they know he's here. Looking for the Chronosphere. Doesn't really connect. Oh, wait, it does. Onto the very tip. Onto Abed. Looking for the stun right now. They do get the double stun onto Abed and the Vendetta to finish him off. Abed goes down to the Potato. So that's going to be a 4 for 2 on the, on the scoreboard right now. And Mineski is just going to get a bit of pressure onto this bottom tier 1. Are right, getting tossed up into the air, going for that Vladimir's offering. And Miracle's gonna make his way to its. Not sure what. He, just yet, but it's still on the Blightstone, the Raindrop, and the Boots. Haven't seen Huskar at that super monster level just yet. He's still going towards an armlet of his own. And now the fresh new Blink Dagger into Rappi, he's gonna go back, maybe find a smoke, go with the OD and DJ, but DJ doesn't have level 6, so it's gonna be very, very tough trying to get a kill into RR. They need to chain all their stuns perfectly if they had to, you know, try for a kill. Look at Jules, levels wise, actually Execration are very, very far behind. Abed is still level 5, and you look at the supports, they're level 4, lowest leveled hero, these are Coddle, and I think they're okay with that. Coddle alt. It'll be pretty big. Like I said, blinding light. Is that an urn? It's gonna be an omelet. But yeah, the smoke coming up for Rappi and DJ. They need to time this. Looks like the intended target could be Miracle, but this is a very, very tough kill. Like Raging Potatoes, they're going around to Gabby, but no, the nice double crush coming up for Rappi. They could look for the turnaround onto the Potato. The Carapace is going to come out. Imineski, can they get away from this? Nope, the swap out. Actually, he will die anyways to the Huskar, burning him down. Trying to burn Jules as well with him. But DJ looking for the toy. Rappi again. Whoa, beautiful crush coming out. Gets Jules. So it's going to be two heroes down on the side of Mineski's execration. Wonderful blowing start for the debut of the Slaughter Blink Dagger. And Rappi, all the way in the back, still looking for a bit, but with low HP, we'll just go back to the base, I think. 
So smoke brought up onto your eventual spread. Well, when the potato comes back up, still won't have been better off cooldown. Looking a miracle, what do we go for? He just completed face boots. Could be looking to get desolator first. RR, we have a chronosphere up available, so they could try for a bend. And they don't have they don't really have vision on where he is. It's just your very standard wards for now. Alright, so for the start, keep off the light, not putting a point into the ultimate just yet. It's gonna be just illuminate and the chakra just for maximum damage output. Miracle finding himself some farm top lane. Yeah, as you realize the top cores, execration they are losing the EXP battle, but they are finding good farm onto your slaughter, your huskar. Meanwhile, Theorem and Smoke coming out. Execration will just go for Roshan instead, so Mineski could just pressure the top tier one. The Blightstone, they could get the, you know, the negative armor onto your tower, which means you take it down significantly quicker. But anyways, Execration will just proceed to do Roshan to bash. Oh, you don't want you want to be careful here. Gabby, don't die to Roshan. Oh, the... How many times has he got him bash up to? You just want to keep Gabby up alive. Alright, there we go. And the... Oh, they actually get the A just snipe. Oh, nicely done, and Ninja Boogie's gonna pay for it with his life, but you burn the Aegis, still very, very big. Oh, wow. That Aegis was so efficient. It helped Execration Kappa. Alright, so Mineski, I would say they definitely have the better exchange to get the top tier 1. Aegis was sniped even though you lose your Coddle, but, you know, it's position 5 Coddle. Anyways, your Vladimir's offering completed into your Faceless Void, so you won't need the Vlads on your PA anymore. It's probably gonna be like a Vanguard. Or he can just go straight for the Deso. Yep. Got a bit of a pause. Alright, so how are you guys doing all the way in Twitch chat? Alright, so yeah, just a quick reminder for you guys, this is the loser's bracket, and the winner of this will go on to play against Fnatic, I believe. Now we're getting some really, really weird ping. But yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the game so far, we're 13 minutes in, we have 4 to 5, net worth just a bit over in Mineski's advantage, EXP, still pretty even. And this Slaughter Blink Dagger and Amplifier, like I said, they want to control that Roshan. It's very, very hard this game. Like, you have to look to your Slaughter to dictate the pace of the game for Execration. Let's see, this Nyx Assassin, Nyx Assassin should be going for the Blink first so, so that he can initiate. Look for those Ravages. Also, for you guys, if you're interested, maybe some of you guys like, you know, your hats here and there. I just hit a thousand likes on my Facebook page, so I should be doing a giveaway. If you guys are interested, do follow me on, on Facebook and Twitter. And anyways, we have ourselves back into a game. Bottom lane Execration will group up for the tier 1 bottom lane. But with the Chronosphere and no ages on the side of Execration, which was sniped by a Coddle, Mineski could actually look to... Yeah, they could actually just look to contest the tower. No, maybe not. They could just be looking to get the Desolator onto PA at least. <laughs> DJ's just keeping Potato there. Alright, but Potato all the way behind. Looking for a bit of a sneaky deaky snipe. He could be breaking a smoke here actually. But okay, there's no smoke on them. Okay. Now it's going to be a Hooded Fine's first item on a bed. No 4 staff this way. He wants more tanky items. But Potato, we'll see what he decides to do. If he can break a smoke, that will actually be a really big thing. But what he doesn't know is that there's a ton of sentry. He's going to walk right under one right now. <laughs> Execution are taking a very passive movement. 
Nyx is hasn't as appeared on the map, so these guys are just like no, I'm pretty sure they're in the top jungle, guys. Looking at the or the drawings on the map. Drawn up for DJ. Jules is getting good farm as well on his side. Like if you take into more points into the wave of terror, that synergy with the PA is really strong, especially against a faceless void. We'll see what they decide to do, but they do have a very nice observer ward in their side for Mineski, like in the enemy jungle. That's that's really really big. But execration pretty much out of the sights for now. And you look at Potato. Did he just complete the blink? Yeah, that's gonna be. Oh, it's actually gonna be a Midas. So maybe it's not gonna be him initiating. We could just see him go, you know, getting towards that Aghanim Scepter, like I said. The really, really annoying Nyx Assassin build. So both teams are gonna look to just farm, get up some items. Maybe at least get the Desolator into your PA. Like he wants to farm up the Nyx, the Nyx Meteor Hammer. So that's him coming up in 250 more gold. Next creation, next creation. What's the plan for you guys here? Huskar can only scale so long before you have you know you end up getting all these counter items on the enemy side. Right, three men smoke coming out from the Rappy DJ, a bad crew. Going to the top lane, but however, Mineski well on it already. They will go straight for Gabby, they find the stun. Gabby. Chain stun for a thousand years. There we're gonna find a corner sphere. Kimo's caught inside. Well, but he does get the false promise off, so that's all he needs to do. Mineski a nice crush coming up from Rappi. They're gonna try for the turnaround right now into the potato. Here comes the ship into the carapace. Will not take much damage, but raging potato will go down anyways. The illuminate trying to snipe someone off. Void does get the kill into the oracle at long last. Time walks into the trees. Rappi with the crush will not be able to do anything as Mineski lose that fight two to one they find the oracle like the idea was there from the void but just not quick enough rr not finding the vo the oracle if they had you know used the false promise i'm saying used the chrono spear onto the oracle denying the false promise now that would have been a completely different situation for mineski but two for one execration they win a fight and with no void around they can easily go try for the tier one top Mr. OD could be going for a comeback Midas of his own. Very, very far down in the net worth. He's been locked down very hard. Miracle just completed his Desolator, so they could try for something here. Raging Potato. There we go. I think they find a bed. Doesn't have the Astral. Spike Carapace comes out. There we go. Nicely done with the Vendetta. For those of you who don't know, Carapace does not break Vendetta. So, really spell efficiency coming out. You saw the Astral Imprisonment. That's the most efficient way to lock the OD down in that case and this is going to be the tier 1 mid or at least a bit of chip damage they will go for a trade fortification for a start DJ looking to fight here with that ship has a level 4 X mark they ping out Rappi going for the crush into RR looking for the swap maybe Warren's gonna come out he's gonna go for the swap no immediately destroyed actually and Rappi's gonna look for a bit more blood to get the amplify out and the death is gonna be there to cancel the blink but they wanna look for can they find it no, Fortune's Hand is actually going to connect and the X mark as well. They could try to go with the Jules here, but do we have a crush? There we go. Kimo looking for the nuke. It's not going to be enough to bring Jules down, but yes, the Huska deals those beautiful flaming spears. Now the life break going on to Miracle. Can they cancel it? No, actually, yes, they will be able to cancel it, and he goes down as well to Gabby. And that will be Execration winning that 3 for 1. As they lose the slaughter, I think he died to the tower. Pretty nicely done is Execration going ham with this Huska Oracle pick. Now looking of course to the Nyx Assassin, can he make something happen here? Finding a point into that ultimate onto the Keeper of the Light, Raging Potato is going to be lurking behind but around the flank. If he can find the lone OD, that'd be really big. Don't think a bed goes down here, but he needs one more hero. Just gonna use the carapace, play around with him. There we go. The stun comes out and the impale. Do we have the mana burn? Probably doesn't have enough damage, but a bed is really low. The hood of defense is gonna be there. The astro imprisonment is gonna maybe set something out. Looking for Rappi. He's gonna blink and get the crush onto the potato. Here comes Gabby, Kimo, DJ. Everyone onto the potato. Everyone wants a potato. And there we go. Execration. 5v1. Getting themselves a nice pick off. So the attempt was there from potato, but probably a bit too YOLO. 
So you look at Miracle, haven't seen that PA go ham just yet. He needs to group up with the you know with the void. They have a chronosphere, so maybe then they can try for something. Invisibility. A bed they go for drums? It's not that Midas, but RR. Bit of a date here, he's gonna stalk a bed like that creepy Facebook stalker. Wave of Terror is gonna scout them out, but no one's really behind. But okay, now Gabby takes an Alpha Wolf for himself, so his attack damage is gonna go up quite a bit. Could be going for a Lotus Orb on his side. He's gonna get healed up, and we'll see what the Mineski do decide to try and f pick a fight here. DJ looking for the Torrent, gonna land into two heroes. We'll do have to follow. Rappy looking for the crash, only gonna find Jules, but here comes the ship, the carapace is gonna come out, but doesn't really connect just at the very end, and they do put a sentry down on the tower, they're trying to go for Gabby here, raging potato outside of range of the sentry, now he's back in, could be thinking about going for DJ, they're swapping, going straight for DJ, get the magic missile, the crash doesn't really land, there we go, nice, okay, the chrono is gonna catch two heroes in the back line, but Gabby going ham, and potato will be going back up to his base, Gabby now the false promise unto him, all these spells being thrown on, no one is dying, what the hell, and Mineski, well, they decide to go back in the crush. Yes, finally someone dies. It's going to be Jules. And you look at Miracle. Amplifies up onto him. The Astro's going to come up as well. DJ looking for the Torrent. And that should be Miracle. No, he didn't get it off, but he will die anyways. So Gabby, this Husker Oracle pick proving too much for Mineski. 7-13, and they are lacking behind. There's another Gold Swing. Goes the way of Execration. Now evened out. Gabby should be okay. They have a blinding light again, so that's gonna deny a tower for now. But are looking for the crush. Doesn't really land. And a mana leak, so Rappy. Where's your mana? Where's your mana, bro? One of the annoying things about going high ground as well against Mineski is to illuminate. And if this guy gets an eggs, you're most certainly never getting into the high ground because he's just gonna keep throwing out the stuns. But execration. Roshan's available for them, and with the Chronosphere not available for Mineski, Execration can take the Roshan. They're pinging it out already. Lotus Orb coming out? Oh, he could just go back for an AC. Yeah, I think it should be the AC, not the Lotus Orb. Armor is going to be really, really strong. It's going to help. And with the Amplifier, that's a really big item as well. But hold on, Raging Potato. Mineski smoked up, looking to make something happen here. Jules. Oh, just revealed himself under the ward. Execration looking for the crush, perhaps. This is a very, very slow rush on the X Monk is gonna land onto your faces, boy. The crush lands onto him. Here comes the ship. Will it land into them? And no, the four star forward and Jules will be the first one going down. Execration now wanting to go finding one more person. Oh no, oh no, not like this. The carapace. Nice double man impale. The raging potato. He's gonna be burned down. It's gonna be a fried potato. And Execration will secure themselves at Roshan. Mineski trying to force the issue, but very, very unwise as Miracle needs a BKB of his own. He's going to build towards that as he picks up a Mythio Hammer. It's a good thing RR did not commit for the Chronosphere. Otherwise, they would not be able to hold the high ground. But he's going to get a Blink Dagger now. And Execration pushing high ground would be significantly harder. But with the Aegis, the chances are still pretty high. Maybe go for the tier 2 bottom lane, as they are grouping up in that direction. So Execration, showing some good form in this game 1. Coddle, will he be able to farm up the axe? That's going to be a very slow axe, he's got... Maybe... Okay, no, it's actually getting a pretty decent timing. Like, 700 more gold, he will find himself an Aghanim Scepter. And that could be the big item which, in daytime, it's going to be really, really big. You're going to have to illuminate, he's going to be able to cast the spells more frequently. And you look at Potato, maybe 4 Staff not the best item, could have been a Blink instead. But 4 Staff nonetheless did save him earlier on. And speaking of 4 Staffs, Odie gets his own. It's, it's a pretty good item against PA as well, you want to be able to kite. Top lane, they're going for a trade, tier 2 for a tier 2, and... Strangely, like, even though the gold graph is barely in Execration's favor, 3000, I still feel that this game can go either ways. 
So 24 minutes in, we're 7 to 15. Mineski now holding on for dear life. As Gabby with his little healing creep, the Cobalt Foreman. He loves that creep. Movement speed, right? Yeah, it's extra movement speed. Ding a ling a ding. So they will start to slowly chip away the tower. That magic resistance coming off on the Berserker's blood, 50%. So it's pretty good, but looking for the crush already in the back line. They find the coddle. Ninja Boogie goes down. And he actually could be forced to buy out by looking inside of him. Oh my god, Mineski, they want to do this. They're forcing the issue. They're going to rat. And if execution, they TP back right now. That's where they can, themselves can TP back and take a fight. But even then, a lane of Rax trade, that's going to be pretty sick coming out despite how far they behind they are. And Gabby, they illuminate onto him. Potato, the carapace is going to come out into the ship maybe. Oh, no, he will get burned down anyways. So one more crispy, crispy potato buyback coming out on his side. He will get the melee Rax. So it's going to be a nice trade. Maybe they can find Gabby. Yep, the Chronosphere comes out to Gabby right now. Looking for the Illuminate. The X mark onto the Raging Potato. Top lane. Will they find anyone here? Miracle. It's going to be him and Jules against the world. Can they find a bet? He's going straight at him. He's going to bring down Rappi. And actually, no. Jules getting the Oracle. But a bet polishes off Miracle. And meanwhile, back in their base, Mineski. Many, many issues going up against Gabby. They need the Illuminate to land. Gabby blinding light, the carapace is gonna come out, he's very low, they will bring down the Aegis at long last, but DJ looking for the X mark, mana leak, what mana, there's no mana, Gabby against the wall right now is RR, time walks away, all that damage could just go back for round 2, Miracle has a buyback, they do get the Rax tr trade actually, so this is very very even between the teams, but Mineski, it cost them, they had to break the bank, they took that 10% and... Pretty much used it to hold, so who bought back? Actually, I think you had to keep off the light and your Praging Potato bought back, so that's gonna be two buybacks on the side of Mineski. Very, very dangerous play, so Potato will have to play more cautious right now. He will be building into the Agonyms, like I talked about, and actually, keep off the light could buy his own Agonyms as well. This is a really big item on him. Miracle, and he actually completed his BKB after that push in the top lane. Very, very even game, guys. This is only game one of this best of three series. Still not sure who could actually win this, but Execration, they are grouping up to the top lane. Gabby did burn his Aegis in that trade, but he definitely got the most out of it. Like, he's going for a Hurricane Pike now. They completed AC. Maybe if the PA was there, they could have tried for a kill, but they were occupied. And they will try for a bit of a bottom lane trade. RR has buyback. He will have to transition to some form of DPS for his team. As the Nyx Assassin's output looks like he will go down one more time. The potato. Oh no. Execration getting the carbs they need. And that's going to be a bed. Wait, who got the kill? Sorry, the Conker. DJ. 5 to 11. DJ, DJ, DJ. Showing it up for his team. That gem pick up from him really big. So they're going to secure map control. Gabby will take the bottom tier too. No, actually no one gets it, but they will try for a bit of a trade top, bottom lane. If they can find two towers for that tier 2, it will be very, very worth it. And then they can go back. Mir actually, Miracle could be actually able to purchase up a Basher. <laughs> They're going for another train. It's going to be Ninja Boogie against the world. He does not have buyback. This is a very, very awkward decision make made here by both the teams as it's going to be a weird trade. They find a tier 3. Now they get the slaughter back off. They will have to go back. Looking for the crush. Miracle actually is going to cancel the call. He may be forced to pop his BKB and fight here. Dagger flies out. Going to Rappi. Yeah, they just want to keep Miracle here for as long as they can. Now he's going for the TP out. Starting to Rappi. He will not be able to get a bash. Not today. Looks like they want to go back here. But meanwhile, the bottom lane. Joel's going down to Rappi and DJ. And now this is the part where they fight. The Chronosphere lands only onto Gabby. He has the Astro Imprisonment from Kimo. Saved by the OD. And now he's going to run out. Raging Potato he gets the old Carapace. Can they kill Gabby here? They need to kill Gabby. The Blinding Light's going to come out. No mana onto Gabby. Can they kill him off here? They need to. But the False Promise comes out. He's going to be kept alive. And they all oh, the ultimate. Will Huskar burning down the Potato again. And now they're going to start hitting onto that melee Rax. As the rest of the team is looking to join them. Boogie will go down to the OD. As the Huskar cleans off the Faceless Void. It's going to be Miracle against the world. No items on his side. May be forced to just throw his life away just so that he can buy back. But with no one there to fight, 9-23, to Mineski struggling to play against this Oracle. So two lanes of barracks down. Could be Megas. They need to fight. They need to fight. But 
looking to see what they would do. The wave of terror comes out. M miracle. Doesn't have a BKB for 15 seconds. The swap out immediately from him, but he's gonna be brought back into the party. Miracle goes down. No buyback on his part. This could be the buy this could be the GG. There we go. Mineski. Losing game one. To execration. It's execration. Actually, they say nope. We're not going home just yet. Well, actually, they're already home, but they will still fight. And we will see game two very soon between execration versus Mineski. Alright guys, won't be able to give you guys the weatherman stats as I am the admin as well for the lobby, seeing as you don't want to give Blaze a bit of a bit of a break. So anyways guys, that was game one. We'll see you guys with game two shortly. Don't go anywhere.